Hi, greetings everybody and welcome uh, to the Aspen Avionics Evolution Max Overview. My name is Perry Coyne. I'm the Director of Marketing Operations for Aspen Avionics. Uh, hosting our webinar today is Scott Smith, Sales Director and James Buck, Director of Flight Ops. Uh, just a few housekeeping items before we get started. You will notice a Q&A icon in your Zoom client. Please submit questions, any questions you may have during the uh, course of the webinar, and we will answer them in real time via the Q&A text box. And James Buck will be managing that part of the webinar. We will also review those questions at the end of the webinar too, to uh, be able to share some information with those who didn't have the benefit of seeing your specific question. With that, I will hand it over to Scott Smith. Um, Scott, take it away. All right. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, like Perry introduced us, I'm Scott Smith. I've uh, been with Aspen since 2007, and we came out with our first uh, certified uh, flight display in March of 2008, and it's been uh, it's been a lot of fun ever since. So uh, we do appreciate your time, and uh, thanks for coming on board with us. So a uh, little bit about myself. Um, I uh, started, like I said, in 2007 and joined the company with, uh, uh, with the intention of, you know, owning the world. But the uh, first airplane I had, I was trying to get my slides to start working here. Uh, the first air, aircraft we brought on board was the uh, Cirrus SR-22 and had that for about six years, put a, uh, 2,700 hours on it. The, uh, the panel we did some upgrades, started out with a single screen and then eventually added the uh, MFDs as those uh, came online. And then uh, life keeps coming at you and my wife kept having kids, so we need a little couple more seats. And we ended up with this A36 and the A36, a beautiful machine, nothing but good things to say about the Bonanza. And for those of you out there who are familiar, you know that's a, that's a beautiful, great flying machine. So. Um, and did some upgrades in the Bonanza as well. So we did uh, uh, the three screens there on the left, which is a 2500 system, and then uh, had the Bonanza for about four years, and then made another upgrade to the uh, to the new, well, new to me, Piper Malibu. I've had that since 17. And the Piper, what's nice about the Piper Malibu coming from the Bonanza is I gained um, air conditioning, de-ice, pressurization, and a little bit more space as my kids were growing. Um, so it's it's been a good machine for us. I'm actually uh, just picking it up now. Had to have a, an engine um, done, had to rebuilt the engine. It was uh, pretty much time, close to TBO. So um, literally just did the first flight, break-in flight on Saturday and in the middle of getting everything tweaked in, but I should be able to go back to uh, my home base today. I'm in uh, Venice, Florida right now, and I'll be heading back to uh, uh, Southern Missouri. I'm flat of uh, Willow Springs, Missouri. So. Anyway, the, and here's what my uh, current panel looks like. So the point of all that is when we're talking to you, we're talking to you from experience. We're real pilots. We really fly the, the equipment. We uh, use it um, almost weekly. Well, definitely weekly, almost daily. Um, James Buck, he's, he'll, he'll be on here in a little bit. Um, he's our chief pilot out of uh, Albuquerque and Durango area. He has a place in Durango and he has a Cirrus as well. So he'll, uh, um, he'll be talking to you. But he kind of he covers the west coast for us and i cover the uh, central and southeast from a sales side um and um you know aspen avionics we focus on customer service and product support when you pick up the phone uh, you're going to get a hold of somebody um those numbers are are um are we'll go right to our cell phone so it makes it easy to get a hold of us um but anyway i'm going to start with uh i'm going to go ahead and shut off my camera i just want to say hi so you can see who is talking to you but i didn't want you know that pretty face to distract you so let me shut that off and um that way we can focus on the important stuff. So our initial product that we had, um, you know, in 2008 was the uh, um, evolutionary flight display, the EFD 1000. And that's kind of what, what gave us a nice uh, shot in the arm and, and kicked us off. And we had had uh, those for a couple of years and then we added the MFDs, but you know, it was, it's, and it's, it's such a great feature rich, rich product. Um, and from a, from an installation side, from an upgradability side, you know, a lot of you out there, we have, you know, over 20,000 systems flying around. So a lot of, a lot of folks that you've talked to and yourselves personally have a lot of time um, using these. 
And what Aspen's known for is the fact that we are very open architecture. In other words, we play nice in the sandbox from an industry perspective. And we'll enter, we try to interface with everybody out there, whether you fly behind, you know, brand G, brand A, brand H, whoever, um, or whatever autopilot. We are uh, very open um, as far as that's concerned. Um, we're also upgradable, and we're going to talk about the Max a lot today. That's our that's our new product. Um, and just to be clear, and I'll say this several times today: the Max system is a completely new uh, blank slate system. It just looks the same because the same form factor, but all the internals are completely different. So understand when I'm talking about Max, that's a totally different product line from our, uh, our legacy uh, systems. So as we, uh, there we go. So as we're looking at our, at, our, uh, at our unit here, on the back of it, just to give you an idea of kind of what it looks like when you pull it out of the panel, you've got the can here that uh, sticks out the back and it's about six inches. Your cooling fan, what it does is it draws air in from the top and exhaust out the bottom. So um, uh, that's how the, the cooling system works. You've got a pitot and static line that plug into the back. You've got a couple boards here. Your AHARS board is right up here. Um, that's all internally. Uh, down here is your backup battery. And I'm gonna talk about that because we have a brand new battery, new design, and it's, uh, it's, it's pretty compelling. It's a, it's a really nice uh, new uh, battery that's uh, lithium ion and it's added added uh, more capability to what we can do now and really cleaned up everything. As far as the, the two other components go, you've got an RSM or remote sensor module right over here. And it looks just like a GPS antenna. It's got this little fin look. And what that is on the back of that fin, that's your OAT probe. So it's got OAT and that's, that goes in for your air data information. It also has a GPS antenna and a GPS engine built into it, along with the heading source for your HSI. So it's a pretty smart design from, uh, you know, that way you don't have a bunch of LRUs around the aircraft. You can literally just this one, one little uh, antenna does all those things. It makes it, uh, brings down labor costs and ease of installation. Your ACU or analog converter unit over here, that's our, our little black magic happy box that allows us to communicate with everything from an older like KX-170B analog navigator up to the new, uh, to the new stuff. It also, allows us to interface with all the autopilots. Um, and, and when I say autopilots, I'll go through those in a little bit, but basically our, our analog, um, the analog uh, autopilots. Now that we, we can talk about new digital stuff is that's super exciting and, and uh, coming, coming up online with the digital autopilot side. So uh, just to give you an example of how the install looks on your panel, we, we try to get away from panel surgery. So you have options. And options being you can flush mount them where you do cut the panel out and you lay them in there where they're flat or we can do this where you put a mounting bracket up and you use the existing holes in the panel and it just the mounting bracket goes right there you slide the unit on don't have to cut the uh, panel up at all so it minimizes the labor cost and um, panel surgery you know and i'm an aircraft owner as you saw every time you know uh, we turn a wrench on it you know or do anything modification wise i always get nervous so um, and that all goes away with the with the aspen systems we're not we're not cutting anything up um, and so, so that makes it a little more, little easier and a little more streamlined. It also makes it easy to add a second screen or a third screen, making it a 2000 or 2500 system, um, but by just, you know, pulling those instruments out of that six pack and, and replacing it with the Aspen screens. As far as interface ability goes, from a navigator standpoint or, or a, a nav standpoint, VOR, we interface with everything out there from the new uh, Garmin Avidyne um, uh, navigators through the, you know, down through the old KX-170Bs, 155s, 165s, all of these different navigators. From an, from an autopilot side, on the, um, you know, basically every autopilot in our industry, with the exception of a few, um, we will interface with the King, the STEX, the Sentries, the Cessnas, and uh, now the new uh, STEX or Genesis uh, 3100 and um, also uh, Bendix King's Aero Cruise. So, and uh, I think Trio, the Trio is uh, uh, coming online uh, very shortly as well. They're finishing up their final, final touches on the, on the Trio side. So, um, and then the Garmin uh, GFC 600 autopilot should be out uh, an interface with them before the end of the year. So a lot of people go, I'm, I'm more concerned about what 
um, you know, how do I make the transition and, and the learning curve of using this thing in my cockpit? So I get this brand new piece of glass and I'm, I'm nervous about, you know, being able to actually use it and not getting lost and um, turn around or confused. And what I want to show you here is just an example of what, what, you know, everything's kind of staying where it has been, right? So if you've got some anxiety about putting in a piece of glass, I want to show you this. So your traditional six packs right here on the left. So you've got your attitude indicator, you've got your HSI or DG, and they're in the same places that they were before. Okay, so if you had, you know, here's your attitude indicator, here's your HSI, here's your attitude indicator, here's your HSI on the same, in the same spot. Your airspeed still on the left side. Airspeed's left side here. Airspeed still left side here. Now here's where the differences start kicking in, and that's getting used to the tape. And when you're looking at a tape, you know, on your your standard or uh, traditional at airspeed indicator, you kind of look where that line is. If it's in, you know, somewhere in this area, I can put my flaps down. I can put my gear down here. Blah 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 blah. So it's the same thing on getting used to tapes. You look at the entire tape. Don't just look at the single number. Same way with the altimeter. You're looking over at the altimeter. It's on the right-hand side. Your altimeter is, um, uh, of course, the tape here instead of round, but we also give you an altitude alerter, which you can dial in an altitude. When you get uh, 15 seconds away from that, it's going to come up and say altitude. If you get more than 250 feet off, it's going to say altitude. And you got a little bug here. So at whatever altitude you pick, it's going to put a bug here, and it gives it to you here. So that's a little bit of an improvement from standard six-pack. Your vertical speed. So vertical speed here, vertical speed still in the lower right hand here. We give it to you graphically, but guess what? You also get it digitally right here. So what you'll find when using the attitude indicator, because our attitude indicator is very precise. You get a line every two and a half degrees instead of every five, like you do on the traditional. So that's five, 10, 15 degrees here. That's, you know, two and a half, five, seven and a half, 10, so on. So um, yeah, two and a half, five, seven and a half, ten. There we go. But you'll see, look at the scale, a lot larger than your traditional attitude indicator. So it's a lot of movement. But what's really cool is it's very precise, and you're going to learn that for different phases of the flight, you can, you know, if I want to accomplish 500 feet a minute down or up, and you'll you'll learn very quickly using it and behind behind your particular aircraft, what's going to give you that performance. And so what I do is I adjust my pitch. I look down at my digital readout here and say if I need to make see if I need to make any adjustments to get that 500 foot a minute descent what I usually shoot for depending on the day your uh, turn and bank slip and skid um, is right in the lower right hand here now it's a little different on the aspen this is one of the things that's a little bit different um, so your uh, ball is up here so slip and skids up here so you step on the bar instead of stepping on the ball like you did here, now you step on this bar. So that's, that's your uh, slip and skid. And then here is your turn rate indicator. So it comes out from the heading and you got this little bar that slides out as you turn and it gives you an indicator for half standard rates there, full standard rates gonna be over here. I'll get that a little more detail in a second, but, but that's how the uh, turn rate indicator works. As far as you know, all the different stuff we can show you, I mean, this is, you'll never see this screen, but just, there's how many different things that are that are um, you know displayed on the screen, and obviously, like I said, you'll never see this on your screen. But this shows you all the different things, like you can you know the, the cross check attitude, whether you're on the battery, your minimums, um, you know if your GPSs are out, you know fault detection, if your RSM's working, yada yada yada. So everything that's going you know that's going to be displayed is uh, you know shown in this slide. As far as what the different knobs do. So down here at the bottom, so the left-hand side of the unit is controlled with the left knob. The right-hand side of the unit is controlled with the right knob. So as I'm, as I'm controlling the, the items on the left, I twist the knob and then I just push in on it to, to change what I'm controlling, whether it's putting in a uh, uh, airspeed bug or if it's uh, changing the course on the right-hand side. If I just turn the knob, it brings up the heading, changes my heading. If I push in on it, it's gonna bring it up and show me the altitude alerter push on it again, it goes to my minimums if I've got minimums activated. And we'll talk about that in a second. As far as different indications. So let's talk about like, if I'm doing something wrong, or if I'm having a bad day, and I've got uh, an issue, you know how with a traditional attitude indicator, if you have a failure or a problem, it's literally just going to kind of get lazy and float off to one side or the other. Um, that doesn't happen with uh, with our systems. It has a fault detection in there. So if you're having an issue, it's literally going to come up and say, cross-check your attitude, something's wrong. 
Um, and if it continues to be uh, an error, it'll give you a red X, which I'll show you in a second. If you're over pitching one way or the other, we give you this little doghouse that shows you, hey, you're excessively pitching up or down, go this direction, red, or red uh, little doghouse or arrows towards which direction you want to go, or what, I'm sorry, which direction you should be going. The, uh, so here's, here's what, you know, attitude fail would look like. So it makes it very obvious. I don't have any attitude. As far as our uh, airspeed tape goes, I really like how many options you have on that tape. So I can put all my different V speeds in. And if I'm a twin, I get my blue line, my red line. Um, I get all the um, different uh, air speeds. I get, if I'm having a, a block pitot tube, it's a very obvious. I've got indicate air speed fail. So if you have a, and then it'll uh, give you, actually give you a message, hey, check your pitot tube. Um, as far as my tape goes here, I'm looking at, you know, my red line, I've got yellow arc, I've got green arc and white arc, and then my red arc. So those, those are uh, very easily, um, you know, noted and easy to, e easy to see. Um, and then you can, you can put in, you know, your different V speeds and you can decide which ones you want to put in as far as, you know, turn them on, turning them on or turning them off. Um, it makes it, makes it real easy to, uh, to set up the different V speeds underneath the menu. So uh, there's an example of VX, VY, or VA. And here's all the different V speeds, the other V speeds we can, we can uh, put in there. As far as the uh, altitude side, so let's talk about the altitude for a second. You've got um, the alerter, which um, is what can also be an altitude pre-select depending on the autopilot. Um, with a 3100 autopilot, it's going to be an altitude pre-select. Um, if you have the APS-4A altitude um, pre-select from avionic straubing, it's also an altitude pre-select. You dial so whatever altitude you dial in um, with the avionic straubing box, you hit a little uh, arm switch, and when you get about 20 feet away from whatever altitude you put in, it's going to kick an altitude hold for you. And that works on you know the KFC 200 auto, we got, uh, autopilot. Um, basically, most analog um, autopilots that that altitude pre-selector will work with. And it's uh, minus the KFC 150, it will not work with the 150, um, but most of the others it will work with. So uh, back to the altitude alert. So we actually give you a call out when you're 15 seconds away from your uh, chosen altitude, it'll say altitude. And once you hit that altitude, you get more than 250 feet off, it's gonna alert you as well through your headset, through an audio call out. And um, we have, if you have an alt, um, Radar altimeter, we have DH, or if you don't, I mean, you're just using minimums for the approach. So whatever the minimums are on the approach plate, you dial those into minimums. And at, when you hit the minimums, it's gonna come up and say approaching minimums and then minimums through the, through the headset. And, and I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more in depth later, but that's one of the things that I think we do better than anybody else out there um, is give you uh, the best performance from the final approach fix to the misapproach point. So, you kind of saw the uh, the cross check attitude a little bit ago, but but um, this would be you know if we're having an issue and just showing you the different um, indications on the screen. And one of the things I want to point out here is the um, you know where we show glide slope and localizer. It's right here in the top part of the screen, and uh, that's really really intuitive, really nice when you're uh, when you're shooting that approach. And you're going to hear me talk about that quite a bit today. Um, but uh, the uh, uh, also, the air data information right here. So your true air speed, your ground speed, your OAT, your wind direction, and your speed. Very, very nice tool. That's actually outputted to your navigator. If you have a 430 or equivalent or, or, or higher, um, we output that air data information to the navigator, and the navigator uses the winds to calculate all your turns. It draws the holding patterns, procedure turns, all the curve fly paths, and it uses it with the GPSS roll steering. So it's really slick. As far as uh, your uh, vertical speed goes, this is just an example. Our, our max max vertical speed is uh, 2,000 feet per minute. And then um, um, again, I go back to, let's look at the digital readout uh, more than the graph. So as far as the HSI goes, you got your traditional looking HSI with little 45 degree tick marks, makes it real easy to do um, entries, course reversals, and um, even pattern work, you know, I'll do 90 degrees and I'm, I'm, I'm flying with students. I'm a, I'll uh, say, you know, use that, um, you know, 90 degrees from, 
from uh, where you are to you know fly your uh, you know, crosswind, downwind, base, final turns. And there's a track bug on here. Now a lot of, and that, this is a big deal. This is what I'm tracking across the ground. So as I'm flying along, and I'll talk about this more, but as I'm flying along, I get what I'm tracking across the ground. So I just that's basically like putting desired track and then track together when I push that blue diamond on top of my uh, green course arrow. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, so here's a little better look at the turn rate indicator. So as this bar comes out, this would be half standard and standard rate turns, which ends up being about a 18, 20 degree bank, depending on the aircraft. Here's what it looks like in an arc mode. And as far as your um, CDI, um, you've got a couple different views here. We do a, we do a nice job with uh, with making this real real easy to use. You got your to and your from needles. You've got um, a couple different layouts. You can do the, the the CDI here where it just stays with you, or you can do it you know on a traditional looking uh, HSI uh, CDI here. We also give you where you're going and how far away you are and how long it's gonna take you to get there right here in the upper left-hand side. In this case, we're GPS one, we're going to Albuquerque, uh, 312 degrees, 124 miles, we'll be there in an hour and nine minutes. So we're going pretty slow today, a little less than 120 knots looks like. So here, and here's our course. And notice you get a little A beside the course, which means it's auto, auto course. So auto course means it automatically sets the course for you based off of whatever's in your navigator from a flight plan standpoint, which, which makes it really nice. Um, and then of course heading here, and then you'll get another indication right here. It says auto course right above that left-hand knob. And then which GPS you're using, GPS one, GPS two, nav one, nav two, and then there's your heading bug if it's active or not. So we go through the, the different looks, different layouts of the uh, HSI. Now let's take a look, just focusing here on the glide slope and localizer when you're shooting the approach and it automatically brings this up for you when you have an active approach or when you're shooting an ILS. And it puts it right in the top part of that screen. I can't tell you how nice, I, I just keep hitting on that, but that is a really nice, because it gets rid of the scan. Everything you need is right in the top part of the screen. So a couple different views here of what our uh, different CDIs looks different CDI layouts look like. So this is in scale, a uh, little bit of a deviation to the left. This is in scale, full deviation to the left and it turns hollow. That way, you know, it's off scale. And then this is, this is your to, and this is a from reading over here. And it actually says to and from on the uh, lateral. Another nice feature, we don't have a, a database per se in the, in the PFD, we bring in the 10 nearest intersections, NDBs, airports, and BORs. So it'll label them on the HSI. It'll show the, it'll show up here. And then we also obviously are going to show your flight plan, whatever's in the flight plan. You've got your two RMIs or uh, bearing pointers, but, um, and those are those two soft keys. And I'll talk, you'll see those here in a second, but basically you can decide whether you want to see GPS one, GPS two, VOR one, or VOR two. And they're easily distinguish what you're looking at there. As far as we want to just dissect down the right hand side of the unit, the start, starting at the top here, you've got your power key or your rev key if you're using an, an MFD. And rev key just means it's going to switch from, uh, if you've got a 1000 MFD, you're going to switch from looking at your moving map or your MFD information over to your backup, uh, uh, backup PIA. It'll turn, change it to your backup or your PFD. Your range key, pretty simple, plus and minus. So I say, you know, plus makes you go closer, minus makes you go away or in and out. Menu key, menu is your friend. You wanna see what options you have for the page that you're on and what you're looking at. You hit menu and it's gonna bring up the options for that page. Um, and then as far as what, what pages you have here, as we come down, these are the soft keys. Soft keys meaning they can be, have different functions. They're not labeled um, with exception, you know, they're not labeled here on the actual key itself. The, uh, the labels are on the inside of the key. So in this case, you've got one of three different pages on underneath that button. And we've got the min minimums here. We've got 360 or arc mode. That's when it switches from obviously, just like what it sounds, going from a 360 to an arc mode look on the HSI. Then your GPS roll steering, which is almost worth the price of admission right there. I call it George Pilot Super Stud. 
because George can fly that airplane a whole lot better than I can. And that gives you the ability to fly all your course reversals, uh, holding patterns, uh, turn anticipations, everything's off that GPSS roll steering. And with the air data information, it takes the winds into account. We've got the barrow, so you just hit the button, barrel lights up, you dial in whatever barrow it, uh, it is for the day and or whatever ATC tells you it is right here. You've got the flight director. Um, if your autopilot has a capability, we don't make up a flight director. The autopilot has to have the flight director capability. Um, you're, we talked about ILS, and um, which is uh, right here and here on the attitude indicator. And again, I'm gonna show you one more time. So if you drew a line across about right here, everything you need is for the approach is right in the top part of the screen with your airspeed, your attitude, altimeter, glide slope here, localizer here, and you also have a minimums will be set right here. And then what the winds are doing to you, there's the winds and what your heading is, what your track is. And if your track bug is on top of that green Coursera, it's gonna keep that straight. And another trick I learned from an old DPE was you wanna know how fast I need to go down to keep that bar, keep your glide slope straight, take whatever your ground speed is, so 120, divide it by two. So it makes it 600 feet a minute. So take whatever your ground speed is, divide it by two, and that's how many feet per minute you need to go down. And that's gonna get you pretty close to keeping that glide slope um, straight. Let's look, take a look at the bottom part of the uh, unit. So we talked about these two uh, knobs and what they did a little bit ago, but let's talk about the three buttons in the middle. And we mentioned that a little bit, but basically the two on the sides are that uh, bearing pointer, RMI, and the middle one is the source selector for your CDI. And what you'll find is you, with a, uh, with a digital navigator, like a 430 equivalent, you don't really have to push this button at all because it automatically switches from GPS to VLOC when your navigator switches from GPS to VLOC automatically. So that's a nice, uh, really nice feature as well. All right, so let's get into the max and what the heck does that max mean? And, and like I said in the beginning, it's a totally new product, complete white slate starting over. It's the form factor is the same, but our processors um, and internal componentry, everything's new and different by 10 years. So as you can imagine, you know, take your computer and 10 years newer, that's what a Max is. Um, and so some really cool things we're doing, we're including synthetic vision as part of all Max displays. You don't have to pay extra for that. Um, we've also reduced the pricing on some of the other features like ADS-B unlock or the um, AOA unlock, which is now $5.95 each. Um, but if you buy a, a dual screen or more, it, it actually comes with the 2000 system and the 2500 system, you get AOA and your ADSB unlock um, included. So you can display your traffic, your weather, and the AOA, of course. The dual aiding AHARs, we, we've probably heard that around the block a little bit. And what the heck's that mean, right? What's dual aiding AHARs? That mean anything? Well, it just means there's no single point of failure. So if you have, a, a, let's say you have a flight along, you have a pedo blockage with a legacy system that used to knock out your entire uh, unit. It would black uh, go. Um, um, you know, red, 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 red X. And now all it does is red X is the air, airspeed. Everything else keeps on going. So, and there's, here's a big, big one. No backups are required with a 2000 system or 2500 system. And the reason for that is our new internal battery, which I'll talk about in a second, but, but basically you've got completely two separate set of sensors, um, two separate systems. You can hit one with a hammer and the other one's going to keep on going. Um, so that's why there's no other backups required. So it gives you a lot of flexibility in the panel to, you know, kind of do whatever you want to do. You can cut a new panel and just put in the three screens and be done, or you can move some stuff around, but there's no like requirements or restrictions as far as where you've got to keep um, different backups. Like you, like you've have had in the past, you've had to keep a backup attitude, airspeed and altimeter. So the, um, uh, let's talk about basically our, our, uh, the pro max here with, um, you know, I talked about the components a little bit, but the plug and play side is a really big deal um, in that you literally pull the, the old unit out, you slide the, we're going to send you, send you a brand new Max, slide that unit in and you just, uh, it, it, and, and keep on going. So in other words, it's a, it's a direct um, slide in replacement. Now, the one thing you will want to do 
is you're gonna add this uh, audio, uh, for the audio alerts, you'll wanna add a twisted pair and have the shop do that for you from the back of the unit to the audio panel. Of course, we talked about more processing power um, and uh, the, 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 the GPS A to A HARS in the event of a static failure. So if you have a, it'll be tied into the GPS in case you have a static failure, which will keep the unit um, going. Um, the audio call outs, the intercept banana, I'm gonna show you that in a second, but the intercept banana, um, the AOG, I'm sorry, the, uh, the AOG, the ALG, ALG readout on the MFD along with the uh, METARs are really nice. Um, and I'll show you that too, those are new. Also, we did a timers page on the MFD as a new um, feature. Um, and then the larger font size, as you select things, whether it be the heading um, or whatever you're controlling basically with the knobs, it automatically brings up the, the whatever that items is and turns magenta and gets about three times larger. So it makes it really easy to identify what you're, uh, what you're controlling, what you're doing. A lot faster processor um, and, and, and power for the future. So for future updates and upgrades, we've, we've got a lot of horsepower in these systems now, which makes it real easy to, uh, to tie into the new, new technologies as they come along. So here's an example of what, what these, some of these new features look like on the MFD. You've got your uh, METAR flag here, and then of course some other METAR flags out here. And those are color coded based off of the reporting point, whether it be VFR, IFR, low IFR. And everybody remembers what the difference is um, between uh, marginal VFR and IFR, right? So you got one to three and three to five, one to three miles uh, uh, ceiling, three to five mile visibility. Anything less than that is IFR, anything more than that is uh, VFR. So that's what those color codes mean. Um, Here's your intercept banana. What the heck's that mean? That is really, really cool feature because it, it takes whatever uh, altitude you dial in to your altitude alerter. And it says, here's where you're going to be at when you cross that altitude based off of your uh, vertical speed and your ground speed. So I use that, let's say I'm, uh, as I'm flying into my airport, I put the altitude alerter a thousand feet above the ground. So pattern altitude, as long as that little banana is on my waypoint or my airport or before it, I know I'm gonna be okay. If it's beyond it, I know I need to go down a little bit. And same way with like, if you need to get underneath airspace in this example, we need to be at this altitude, whatever it is that we've selected to make it underneath this class Bravo airspace, or you wanna go above mountains or whatever. There's a lot of different uses for that uh, um, intercept, uh, altitude intercept banana. And uh, oh, the other thing I was thinking of is uh, climbing, uh, uh, sorry, altitude restrictions. So you're coming in, uh, you've got a uh, an arrival you're doing. You got they say be at um, Cermo at six you know six thousand feet of Cermo, whatever it is. Dial in six thousand feet. Make sure that that arc is at Cermo or before it, so you're you're hitting your crossing restriction. Here's your AGL readout down here, and it tells you how high I'm am above the ground. If you're living in Florida, probably doesn't matter that much, but if you're anywhere outside of Florida, it's like yeah, I want to know how high I am above the ground, especially out west. So with the, uh, this new internal battery, the enhanced, uh, excuse me, the enhanced uh, um, internal backup battery, it'll, it's, it's what allows us to remove all the backups on the 2000 and 2500 systems. And it gives you, um, you know, full, we, we, we published 30 minutes of use, it's gonna last 30 minutes of use. It's gonna last a little bit longer than that. Um, but the key here is it's internal. And before we had what, what was called the external backup battery. And that was uh, that had that required labor and a larger battery that had to be mounted in the aircraft, and so that's all gone away. So it's really streamlined everything down with this new internal battery, and it's uh, it lasts 2,200 hours or four years. So that's a, a really big deal too. And they're and they're very cost effective uh, to replace. Uh, they're actually a couple hundred bucks. So you're uh, you're not going to get hit with a great big. Um, invoice when it, when it comes time to replace the, the, that new battery. And we are including them in the E5s, the Pros, and the MFDs. So that's, uh, that's really nice. Now, if you have a legacy, let's say you had a legacy unit like a 2000 system with that external battery, and it was time to change that out, you could do that through what we call Mod 1. So if you've got a 2000 or 2500 system right now, currently with the external battery, you, you need to, you know, it, later on when you need the new battery, you, you can do what we call Mod 1, 
and it's twenty nine ninety five for that for that mod, and uh, that's going to get you a a new legacy or I mean a, a a legacy MFD that will have that new um, internal battery built into it. Of course, I'm advocating everybody you need to upgrade to the max and take advantage of the trade in. Um, you know, instead of you know spending money on on doing something like a mod one. Some new new uh, digital autopilot interface with this 3100 is well, this was really big news. We just uh, uh, Genesis received STC back in the beginning of the month of uh, June, and they've added several aircraft to their STC list already, which gives you full interface. So full interface being, I've got uh, indicate airspeed control, altitude pre-select, vertical speed control. All of my mode enunciations here, along with flight, my flight director bars. So I'll have all that and envelope protection. So it uses the AHARS uh, out of the Aspen for the uh, envelope protection out of that digital autopilot. And, um, you know, we'll check with them. They are uh, adding aircraft weekly to, their, uh, to that STC that allows for this full interface. Now, let's say you have a 3100 and an Aspen currently, and your aircraft's not on the STC list yet, or you're, or you're in the middle of an install, they can go ahead and do the interface digitally without the quote unquote, this unlock right here for 1995, without that unlock, and you're still gonna get a handful of the features and it's actually a legal, uh, it's a legal uh, install today. But the, the full feature unlock uh, with, with all the bells and whistles I just talked about is 1995 and your aircraft has to be on their STC list with the new 1.4 software. So that is, uh, that is brand new. Like I said, just, just got announced here this month. Uh, another, another thing we need to talk about is if you have an ACU currently, that's gonna go away. We, you don't need an ACU anymore. So if you've got two 430s um, or equivalent, no effects, right? If I just have uh, two 430s and I'm, I'm coming out of a, a, a say a, a, an older autopilot SX30 or King KSC 200 whatever I have an ACU that AC goes away and I got two 40s 30s and I go to a 3100 no big deal however if you have an a, a KX 155 or 160 or an analog nav tied to your Aspen you're going to need an ACU 2 because the ACU 2 is required in that install because of high speed airing 429 uh, data that has to come through to the 3100 autopilot. So in that case, you would need an ACU2 if and only if you have an analog navigator like a KX170B, 155, etc. The other option to that, instead of spending the money on that ACU2, is you could you probably already have it installed with an indicator and just leave it like that with that with that uh, analog indicator. So let's talk about pricing. Um, we're, gonna, we're about done here. We're gonna finish up in the next few minutes and then we'll, we'll open it up for question and answer. But the, uh, the Pro, the PFD uh, 1000 Pro Max is uh, $9,995. Our 2000 system with the, with the new extended duration internal battery is $15,995. So $16,000, you get two screens, no backups required, everything goes away and it really cleans up your panel and gives you a lot of options. The 2500 system, is uh, 1995, so just under 20 grand, all three screens. Now, what I like about having the three screens is it gives me the options to do several different things at one time on the two MFDs. It doubles the MFD capability. So I go from having a moving map um, and you know putting the different layouts here to having you know I could have my approach plates here, taxi diagrams. I could have, be looking at my weather while I'm looking at you know traffic over here, and you can mix and match it and kind of do different layouts however you like. So it gives you a lot more options with with the uh, the three screens, and it also gives you um, a lot more. You know, it's a I call it a balanced panel, or, and it looks really nice with the uh, with the three screens across, like you saw in those pictures earlier. Um, but that's you know, it's only it's like you know four grand difference to add that second MFD, and it gives you a lot of capability, a lot of functionality. So if you have an existing Legacy Pro. Um, or, or two screens or three screens. Here's how this looks. So normally, um, well, and, and actually this is our, our, our pricing as we, as we would stand, you know, any day of the week. And, it, and so here, so you understand it, it comes with a new two year warranty, they're brand new units. So you get a, a new uh, Pro Max, 2000 Max, 
or 2,500 max. And as you can see there, if you have a single one, you're trading in your exist, and we ship them ahead of time. So you, it, it just brings the, uh, the shop time down, shop time down, or uh, you're sitting there. So your unit's waiting for you when you get there. It's 5495 for the, for a single screen, 7995 for two, and 9495 for three screens. And again, about the slide-in replacement, and you definitely want the audio callouts. So we're running a special right now for those of you who attended this seminar, and um, it's going to be $29.95 for a single screen. It's $54.95 for two screens, and it's going to be $79.95 for all three. So that's a significant uh, price reduction just for just for attending. And I see there's uh, 60 some on, of you on here, and uh, make sure you take advantage of that. Um, and it and again, it does include synthetic vision. So with that. That's all I've got for right now. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up to questions and I'm gonna let uh, James Buck come online here and go with, uh, start start with the questions, James, if you would, and we'll go from there. All right, thank you, Scott, I appreciate it. Um, one of the top questions though on your last slide, how long how long do, they, do the webinar attendees have to uh, take advantage of that pricing? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's a good, <laughs> how long do I have? Well, let's see, is it the last day of the month? You got about five hours. No, <laughs> um, no, we'll give you uh, a, a couple of weeks to take advantage of that. What All right, thanks. Okay, I'll just go over some of the more popular questions I've, I've been receiving. The first one is um, the question about the GFC 500. Uh, unfortunately, um, the new FA rules mandates that the autopilot manufacturer must do the STC work and approval of integration of outside equipment. So in this case, Garmin would have to do the GFC 500 inter interface and Aspen cannot do that. I will say we have worked closely with both Genesis and Garmin the past several years or the past few years with the Mac when we released the Mac systems and have provided both those companies with all our interface technology um, to allow them to uh, do the integration with our systems. We've also made several changes to our software for both companies to make sure they integrate with the 600 and the 3100 properly. Um, we hope that Garmin will extend that to the GSC 500, um, but I cannot say that there's any timeline if they're gonna do that or not. So I, I know the GSC 600, but we cannot, there's no real discussion on the GSC 500 at this point. Yeah, correct, right, the, the, the 600 should be out, like we were saying before the end of the year. Um, and, and again, like James said, go to Garmin, ask them about the, um, you know, the 600, when that's gonna be released, if that's what you're interested in, or the 500. Um, if, if you're interested in that, but that has to, like, like I said, that has to be driven through Garmin. Um, so yeah. With that, yeah, so go ahead, James. What's the next question? There, 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 we, Aspen has over 15,000 customers out there flying, currently flying our equipment. Um, so I know, I know they're going to want, Garmin's going to want a piece of that eventually with that GFC 500, but we just don't know when it's going to happen. Um, next po most popular questions have been about the upgrade, uh, what work needs to be done. Well, the awesome thing about it is this system, the max display plugs into your existing harness. So you maintain the same remote sensor module doesn't change out. Nothing in the harness changes. The only additional labor required is that since as Scott mentioned, the maxes now have audio, they do have to run a wire from the existing Aspen connector to your audio panel. So that's the only real additional labor. Any unlock you had such as synthetic vision, angle of attack or ADS-B, all those unlocks will continue to work because those are stored in your config module. All your settings are also stored in your config module, so you don't need to recalibrate anything. Everything will just work once it's plugged in. Yeah, and, it, and I've, I'm hearing, I don't know what you're hearing, James, but my shops are telling me it's you know half a day to a day, depending on um, you know how hard it is to get the back of that audio panel. Correct, yes. Yeah, I'm hearing about the same thing as that as well. Um, let's see. Uh, Scott mentioned this, but there seemed a lot of questions on it. So with a 2000 max or the 2500 max, you do not need any backup attitude indicator anymore. If you have an existing 2000 or 2500 system with the external battery, we ship all new units with our new internal battery. The internal batteries last just as long as the external battery. So, you, so that takes a replace that external battery. So when you do that swap, the shop will remove the external battery and the switching and you rely solely on the two internal batteries within the Aspen systems. Um, 
to get the reduced price uh, for the webinar, make sure you tell your shop when you order it that you, you know provide the shop with your end number, your name, and the display serial number uh, in your aircraft. You can get that from either your uh, logbook entry or you can turn on your display, hit the menu buttons and scroll all the way to the right and get the serial number. That gives them the information they need to submit the, the order to us and uh, we'll take over from there. And basically once we get the order, we ship them the new displays they receive the displays and they contact you, say, hey, we've got your displays, come, sure and, come in and do your swap. And then um, once they're done, they just need to send us back to, to your old units within 90 days. Um, let's see what else we got here. Hey, James, there was a huh. question that came in on the chat and I'm hoping that you guys can uh, answer this live. Uh, I'm sure there are a lot of people wondering the same thing because we went over it pretty quickly, but there's a, if you were to upgrade from a single pro PFD to two Mac screens, what would that cost be with the special pricing? Oh, so, so the special price is already included in, in, the, in those orders. So for instance, well, we're, we're taking care of our legacy customers that want to upgrade to the 2000 or 2500 system. So we're already extending that single, that 2995 price and then they're purchasing a normal dis a display at a regular price. So it turns out we're giving you $5,000 trading credit towards a 2000 or 2500 system. Um, let's see, if I have an E5, can I direct slide and replace them with a Pro Max? No, if you have an E5, uh, the, upgrade cost, the upgrade cost for that is $4,000. Uh, the, the 2995 is only for the Legacy Pro systems. Mm. How do I ensure the dealer gets the right pricing? I just said that, just to make sure you contact the dealer with all your information, give them your name, let them know you attended the webinar. We have a record of all, every, all the attendees, so we just verify that list and uh, give you the appropriate pricing. Uh, as, far as, as far as the Pro H's and the Class 3 displays, um, we are intending to make those max systems eventually, but we don't have a timeline on those quite yet. Uh, I'd probably look, you know, we might have some more information on timeline on that towards the end of this year. Uh, as far as software, how do I tell what software I have on my unit? Uh, basically, you turn on your display, press the menu button, scroll all the way to the right, and it'll tell you what your software, your, your map software, your IOP software, and your unit serial number. Um, so let's see, Scott said this is good for the next two weeks for, through middle of the month. So let's call it the 18th of, I don't know, wait a second. Yeah, for two weeks, we'll call it the, 16th, the 16th, 16th July, which is two, which is uh, three Fridays from now. Yep. Um, Dynon Autopilot, we do not integrate with any Dynon, Dynon products. Um, airspeed bugs. And altitude bugs for pre-select. Yeah, basically, um, you would set the your altitude altitude bug, like Scott mentioned, with the right knob. You can set your airspeed bug with the left knob, and then you would press indicated airspeed or out or, or whatever the uh, appropriate functions on the thirty one hundred. Um, for instance, on I fly a DFC ninety to my Cirrus, it's going to be the, act, act the same. I would set the altitude bug on the Aspen display, and I can also set the airspeed bug with the left knob and the autopilot will fly those and capture them. Yeah, don't you hit like vertical speed and um, altitude together, James, on that DFC-90? Yeah, so depending on autopilot, yeah, I'd have to hit vertical speed. I'd have to select vertical speed or indicated airspeed. So I do. I typically just do indicated airspeed climbs and vertical speed descents, but you can do it either way. That should be the same with either, with the new, you know, 3100 or the probably the Garmin GSC-600 too. Is that correct? Right? Um, what is the cost of replacing a new internal battery? Um, you want to talk to your dealers about that because it depends how old and what mod your legacy display is. Um, if it's a newer mod where we just we just send a battery and a new label, it's, it's, it's fairly inexpensive. But if, if you've got an older board that we've got to interface with, I think you'd be up to 3000 bucks. So yeah, the, mod, the mod one's twenty nine ninety five for the MFD. Yeah. You got to do that. So yeah. So in that case, if if you need if if you need to do the mod one, you might as well just do the max upgrade instead of just upgrading the battery in your old system. Um, owners cannot make the swaps. These have to be done by a dealer. You have to purchase them through a dealer, and the dealer has to do the install. 
Uh, when will the Pro Max fully integrate with the 3100? Um, that is up to Genesis. Genesis has released the initial uh, oh. approval and they're doing it by aircraft. So I'd check on the Genesis website for their updates. Uh, I was going to say Bonanza's just came online. I know uh, Cessna 210s. Um, there's several, I mean, they're adding them all the time. So just check with uh, with Genesis. But yeah, I mean, that, that's those are fully interfaceable right now. Yep. Um, special pricing one more time. The single display, single uh Trade into a single display is twenty nine ninety five, a two thousand trade in is fifty four ninety five, and the three display is sixty nine ninety five, and AOA is six hundred dollars per or five ninety five per display. So it's not just you buy it once; you have to buy it per display. In most cases, I recommend just putting it on the MFD one thousand if you have one because you've got it in the thumbnail view, which is why I typically like to use it anyway. Um. Century three autopilot. Uh, auto interfaces with auto interfaces with our displays um, depends if you need um, if you're if you're removing your vacuum system. Remember the Century three is an attitude based autopilot. And it's, the attitude source is the current attitude indicator, the vacuum driven attitude indicator on your system. We have an EA one hundred that changes the digital attitude information from the ASM to analog, so the Century three can understand it. Um, those E100 boxes list for three thousand dollars. Let's see. Yeah, if you have a two thousand Max the Piper Malibu installing now and has the old internal batteries, can I do an exchange? Um, I would just talk to your. That, that seems to be a talk to your shop and have your shop contact the field service team. And they can tell you the best route to go um, with getting those batteries. Um, but really, if you just got the 2000 Max system, there's really no need to change out those batteries. Yeah, I was going to say they should be the new battery. If you, I think, I think we started. Was it James? Was it in uh, November? We started using the new batteries, and then just to replace them, it's not with the with the current internal uh, backup battery. I think I think it's just a switch and like say a couple hundred bucks. So yeah. Um, if I replace my E5 with a Pro Max, do I need a backup? Yes. So the E5 is certified as an electronic flight instrument. And this is very confusing to us and to customers. But the FA rule says if it's an EFIS, uh, which the E5 is, it does not require a backup attitude indicator. The Pro Max is a primary flight display. And a primary flight display does require a backup attitude indicator. So if you go from an E5 to a Pro Max, and you've pulled your vacuum driven attitude, well, now you've got to come up with an attitude source, a backup attitude source, of which the two MFD 1000 is a perfect fit for that. Let's see. Uh, software updates, um, our, 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 our cultural nav data is through Jeppesen. So if you have a Jeppesen account, you may be able to bundle, get a bundle pricing. I don't know what that is. And then our charts are through Seattle Avionics. Um, some of you folks that fly IQ, um, you get some, I think if you buy like one subscription from Seattle Avionics, it might go across several units. So, you, you know, I would contact them for pricing. Um, I think uh, as far as Oshkosh, I think Perry's going to talk about where we're going to be located at Oshkosh. Yeah, I'll just, uh, let me just jump in here. Yes, we're going to Hangar B uh, booth uh, 2145. As soon as you walk into Hangar B, Turn to your right, you can't miss us. And we also have a uh, North a hospitality location in the North 40 uh, area, where it's basically you can kind of, you know, if you're camping down there, you can come into the tent, sit down, grab a bottle of water. So we're going to be in two places there. Yep. You know, the North 40 is where, you know, everybody comes in when you're, when you fly in, they bring the buses in there. You know, when you're, when you're paying for your fuel there from Basler, if you look back, you'll see the asking you hard to meet, but. Aspen tent, and um, and then we got several aircraft out of, out there as well with our systems. And if you want to see what it looks like in an aircraft, that's a good spot to do it. Yep. Um, let's see. I have a question on the Stratus. The, the Stratus unfortunately does not have a wired out. I think the Stratus only has like a Wi-Fi out, so there's no uh, there's no way we can talk to the Stratus transponder for ADSB weather or traffic. And let's see audio cables. This. Um, 
it's just a twisted pair of wires. So I would just talk to your shop. I, I, I don't think the cost of audio cable should be any factor in deciding whether I go to a max or not, though. I don't think that's going to be a, a large burden. And that seems to be the last of my questions. Yeah, I, I saw somebody asking about an R44 earlier. There is an STC for the R44 with the class, you know, the helicopter unit. That's going to be the legacy system, and it's um, uh, it's available. And I can't remember. There's a couple of people that hold that STC, James, but I can't remember. But there, you can put them in R44s. Oh, I thought he was asking about the Max for an R44. I'm sorry, yeah, I might have misread that. Max and R44, and you can't do the Max in a Class Three aircraft yet. So, yeah. if you've got a you know anything over six thousand pounds, like a Cessna 340. I'm sorry, not 340, 400 series Cessna um, or larger, um, then you you can't do the max yet. You know, you use a, a class three system, legacy. Uh, let's see, okay, there are a couple other questions in a different bot, a different chat room here. Let me, <laughs> let me look here. Do, do, do. Let's see if I, pl if I place my order and they will swap my do my swap next week. Am I allowed for special pricing? Um, I would contact your dealer on that, but I'm pretty sure if, if you're on this, uh, we could probably take care of that. But that I would just contact your dealer and have them contact your sales rep. Um, let's see. And AOA unlock is a is is five ninety five per display. Um, it does does require short calibration flight. Basically, uh, your shop will when they unlock angle attack, they'll put in your basic empty weight, your max gross weight, the weight you're going to fly at calibration as close as possible, and you'll go fly a short calibration flight. Basically, you, you fly at VA for a minute and a half, VS times one point three for a minute and a half, and VSO. Um, times 1.3 in a minute and a half, and the uh, system will learn your 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 aircraft's particular lift curve, and then from there on, once it's calibrated, no matter what your uh, your your weight, your center of gravity, uh, the Aspen will accurately depict your um, angle of attack. Okay, so I think I cleaned all those up, Perry. All right, I think I saw a couple more come in, James, uh, from Antonio um, and Thomas. And I think that if we get those, I think we've covered it all. Let's see, I have an EFD, not PFD Pro. Let me say one other thing. I'm noticing there's a couple questions about adding uh, MFDs and I did forget to talk about that. So. Let's say you have a single screen Aspen Pro and you want to make it a 2000 system, right? So you want to add a screen and upgrade the other one or trade it in, sorry, for the max. And that's $10,995. So it's a really good deal where you can say, all right, I've got a single legacy screen right now. I'm, I'm going to trade that in and get a brand new two screen 2000 max and it's $10,995. And I'm trying to trying to figure out this question I, I see here. Um, it says I have an EFD, not a PFD 1000 Pro with all the unlocks. Um, well, so EFD is an electronic flight, electronic flight display, which a PFD is an EFD. So I hope we're talking about the same thing. So, but yeah, if you have all the unlocks, the upgrade price is still twenty nine ninety five. And all those unlocks, you do not have to repurchase unlocks. The unlocks will continue to work because those are stored in your configuration module. And no, if you already have the AOA calibrated after the max upgrade, you do not need to recalibrate it. Okay, so I think that's one more. Um, oh, there's just yeah. one more that came in from Chick. Um, how long to ship a new max? We can ship those today. Yeah, yeah, we've got them available right now. Um, and uh, we really appreciate everybody showing up. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, Perry, you want to close out? And and uh, we've got our uh, information right there. If you want to contact us directly, uh, feel free. And um, we, uh, we've been here for an hour. So uh, we do, uh, do appreciate everybody joining us today. Thank you very much for your time. And, and we look forward to taking care of you guys.
And I just want to uh, close up today again to um, just to thank you again for for attending today's webinar. I, I have recorded this webinar. If you do want to see, um, you know, get a link to the recording, just uh, shoot me a quick email. It's perry.coin at aspenavionics.com. And uh, I'll be able to convert that today and I'll probably have it to you this afternoon. So again, thanks for joining us, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you.